A 72-year-old homeless man was found in his tent with a fever and confusion. On physical exam, he is disoriented with a temperature of 38.6 Celsius, a heart rate of 122 beats per minute, a blood pressure of 106 over 84, and an oxygen saturation of 99% on room air. You notice spleen megaly when examining his abdomen. You also notice flaccid paralysis and what appears to be multiple bug bites on his skin. Which laboratory abnormality in this patient would lead you to suspect West Nile encephalitis? The correct answer is lymphopenia. People with West Nile encephalitis will have a leukopenia with a profound and prolonged lymphopenia, which could help you distinguish this pathology from other causes of encephalitis. West Nile encephalitis is an arthropod virus endemic to the Middle East, but it could also be found throughout the United States. It is transmitted via mosquitoes, with birds serving as the intermediate host. Most people with West Nile encephalitis will remain asymptomatic or have signs and symptoms similar to those of a mild viral illness. Patients with encephalitis can present with various psychiatric and neurologic signs and symptoms, such as cognitive deficits, seizures, flaccid paralysis, and tremors, but most people will complain of a headache and have a low-grade fever. If a lumbar puncture is performed, such as in cases of meningoencephalitis, these studies will show a pleocytosis with mostly lymphocytes, normal to elevated glucose levels, and an increased protein. Decreased cerebral spinal fluid glucose is typically found in patients with bacterial or fungal meningitis, but this value is generally normal in cases of viral meningitis. Leukocytosis in a patient with West Nile encephalitis suggests an overlying bacterial infection. This is in contrast to the leukopenia you typically see in cases of West Nile. A mildly increased ALT and AST may be seen in West Nile encephalitis, Epstein-Barr virus, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, and ehrlichiosis but markedly elevated transaminases are not generally part of an arboviral infection. If you like this case and enjoy medical cases like this one, check out Clinic, which is our new subscription-based web application, where each week we present you with new clinical encounters and multiple choice questions based on a variety of medical pathology, from common disorders to the rarest diseases. Each week, your digital clinic is loaded with brand new cases, which are carefully crafted by our team members exposing you to medical pathology you otherwise might not have had a chance to see or learn about at school or in your clinical practice. Subscribing to the Clinic app is also a great way to support this channel, allowing us to keep creating great medical educational videos, interactive software, and more medical cases like this one, for free on YouTube or at an affordable price on our website. But if you don't feel strongly about supporting us this way, that's okay. We still would like to show our appreciation to everyone who has continued to show their support for this channel over the years. And as a token of our appreciation, we've created a free collection of medical cases that you can access on our website. Just sign up for a free med school account by visiting the link in the description below. After you've successfully registered, you'll be redirected to the free collection landing page where you could add the collection to your account. And from here, you could immediately start testing your medical knowledge with the various clinical encounters found in this collection. You'll also have unlimited access to this collection, so you can repeat and attempt these cases as many times as you would like, forever.